Learning how to crochet for beginners. Give yourself a tap on the back as you embark on the learning a new skill, and I would love to journey with you and walk you through each step of the way. I am your partner and host, Teresa Victoria of Accessories. Welcome to my channel. In this series of videos, I will be taking you through the things you must first have and master. Then the basic stitches from chain and slip stitch to single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, and treble crochet. So stay tuned for all the videos that are coming. I suggest that you watch the video in sequence so you can get the idea and the tips. We will work as we go along so you must be ready with your hook and crochet material. So let's dig in. Lesson 1. In this video, you will learn to must. A must with a U and a must with an A. The must with a U are the things you must have and the must with an A are the things you need to master. And these are how to hold a hook, how to hold a crochet material and and how to tie a slip knot. Things you must have of course, show material. I have here three kinds, the thread, the yarn, and the cord. These are widely available locally, and as a good citizen, I want to support our local manufacturer. But you are not limited in any way to use any other kinds of brand you like. There are so many out there, I tell you. But any of these three is a good start. For one, they are affordable and easy to find. Let's differentiate each kind. The thread. It is made of 100% cotton, 175 meters per ball. I use number 7 crochet hook and it's best for doilies, tablecloths, bedspreads, earrings, and other accessories and if you heard Irish lace crochet it is also best for it next is the yarn it is made of 100% acrylic approximately 35 meters and recommended hook size is number four Yarn is best for the things that can be wear, like hats, shawls, sweaters, and many others. This is soft and manageable. Let's go back to the shade number and dilat number. This is important information that we must take into account. The shade number will tell us if we have the same shade of color, and the dilat number tells us the batch number when the yarn is being dyed. Buy the same number of shade color and dilat number, especially the dilat, because it will show the difference in your project if they aren't the same. The next is the cord. It's made of nylon or thermoplastic material. Therefore, you need to burn the tails or the ends after cutting because you can easily pull the fiber. Otherwise, your project will be ruined. See? Each roll of cord has 144 yards and 80 grams. The strand is 2 millimeters in diameter. You can use 5 mm to 6 mm hook. It is hard, sturdy, and strong, but not hands and finger friendly. Because of its hardness, your hands and fingers can easily get tired. Also, you need the pliers to pull the tapestry needle when you are hiding or burying the tails. The next thing you must have are your tools. And these are a pair of scissors or reaper, tape measure, tapestry needle, marker. This is optional. If you don't have this, you may use scrap yarn, paper clip, or hairpin. 
pliers if you're working with a cord. As I mentioned, I need pliers for pulling the cord when hiding it. And lastly, and most important, are your hooks. These are my hooks for 11 years, but I recommend the soft grip for you as a beginner. Things you need to master How to hold a crochet hook This is your crochet hook, a double-headed hook type. One is 5 millimeters and the other is 6 millimeters. This is the head and this is the shaft where you catch the crochet material. And this is the gauge where you can make your loops even and helps you with your tension. Now there are two types of holding a crochet hook. One is the pen grip and the other is the knife grip. You will rest your forefinger and your thumb in this flat groove in knife grip. While in pen grip, you will rest your middle finger and your thumb on this flat groove while your forefinger is on top of it. The next thing you need to master is how to hold a crochet material. This is your crochet material. This is the tail or the end and this is your working end. You will hold the crochet material by your left hand which is responsible for the tension or the tightening or loosening of stitches and stabilizing your workspace. Now, holding a crochet material differs from one person to another. Thus, I will show you four options. Choose what is comfortable to you. Let's have option one. Using your forefinger and middle finger, pinch the working end for about four to six inches away from the tail. Then move your thumb and ring finger for about two inches away from your forefinger and middle finger and pinch the crochet material. This distance will serve as your working space. Hold the hook with your right hand and this will be your starting position. Option 2. Put a working end in front of your hand and fold your little and ring finger. Wrap around your forefinger starting from the back to the front. Then move your middle finger and thumb two inches away and pinch the crochet material. The folding of little and ring finger will help with your tension. Then get your hook for your starting position. Option 3. Wrap your little finger twice. Then put the crochet material at the back of the ring finger, then to the front of the middle finger, and wrap around the forefinger starting from the back. Then move your middle finger and thumb two inches away and pitch the crochet material. This space is your working space. Then get your hook for your starting position. Option 4. And this is how I do it. Wrap your little finger twice. And wrap around the forefinger starting from the back. Then move your middle finger and thumb two inches away and pitch the crochet material. Now if you want to have a long tail, just leave enough and wrap again the crochet materials in your hand. Then get your hook for your starting position. Another thing you need to master is how to tie a slip knot. A slip knot, or simply a knot, is important to master because it is the first step taken when beginning any crocheted project. Taken into account that everyone may have its own style, I will demonstrate five techniques. Find one suitable for you. Option 1. Hold the crochet material the tail on your right and the working end on your left hand. Put the tail on top of the working end and make a loop. Hold the 
hold the loop with your forefinger and your thumb. From the loop, pull through the tail and release the loop. Then hold the working end and the tail with your thumb and your forefinger. Pull the loop until it tightens and pull the tail. Then insert the hook and pull the tail, but not too much. The hook must have enough room to pull through. And wrap the crochet material to your left hand and your hook on your right for your starting position. Option 2. Leave 4 to 6 inches of tail. Then stick out your forefinger. Wrap the tail from the front of your forefinger, then to the back. Then overlap it with the first loop made. Then hold the overlap with your thumb. Continue wrapping to the back of your forefinger, creating two loops. Pinch the tail between your middle finger and back of your middle finger. Grab the one on the right and put it on top of the one on the left. Pull the underneath loop completely out from your forefinger. Pinch the two ends with your thumb and your forefinger and pull the loop until it tightens and pull the tail. Then insert the hook and pull the tail, but not too much to give enough room for the hook to pull through. Wrap the crochet material to your left hand and your hook on your right for your starting position. Option 3. Leave 4 to 6 inches of tail. Stick out your forefinger. Wrap the tail to the front of your forefinger and hold it with your thumb. Now wrap it around one more time. Then pinch the two pieces of crochet material with your thumb and middle finger and hold it in place. Grab the one on that's on the left and wrap it over to the one on the right. Then again, grab the one on the left and pull it out of your forefinger, leaving the other loop. And pull it tight. Insert the hook on the loop and pull the working end to make it smaller. Wrap your crochet material to your left hand and your hook on your right for your starting position. Option 4. Again, leave 4 to 6 inches of tail, then stick out your forefinger and middle finger. Rub the tail from the front of two fingers to the back, then overlap it with first loop made, then hold the overlap with your thumb. Continue wrapping to the back of your forefinger, creating two loops. Pinch the tail between your middle finger and your forefinger. Using your hook, grab the one on the left, pull it under the one on the right. Pull the loops out completely from your fingers. Pinch the two ends with your thumb and your middle finger and pull the loops tightly. Pull the tail to make it smaller. Make sure it has room enough to pull through. Wrap your crochet material to your left hand and your hook on your right for your starting position. Option 5. This is my way of tying my slip knot. Wrap the crochet material on your left hand. Grab your hook and put it under the working space. Wrap it over or yarn it over. 
and pull the loop toward the thumb and middle finger and pinch it. Turn your hook 360 degrees and put it under the working space and wrap it over or better yarn over. Pull through to the loop made. Hold the tail and pull it tight. Just enough for the hook to pull through. And this is now your starting position. I think we're done with today's video. I hope you enjoyed the time with me learning what you must have to begin crocheting and what you need to master. Choose from the options shared and practice what is comfortable with you. The skill you learned today will be used as you advance to the next lesson on how to crochet for beginners featuring the chain and slip stitch. So stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe down below and click that link for notifications so that you can get all the new videos as they come out for our Crochet for Beginners series. Happy crocheting and have a great day! Till next time!